welcome back. Uh, next video we're going to do is going to discuss the stove that I'm taking and a couple of the other products that I'm bringing with me uh, for cooking. Um, as my wife is so dearly wanting to make sure we point out, I have my fire safety both to my left and to my right prior to beginning this. Thank you, dear. Uh, again, uh, I'm using MSR. Uh, highly, highly approved their products. Um, I've used them, but I, I did want to cover a stove. Uh, as I said, another when I was talking about the water pump, why am I using it? Well, I already owned it. So instead of buying a whole new stove, uh, a lot of people are using canister stoves these days. I have very little experience with a canister stove. Uh, I know a lot of the pocket rockets and stuff out there that people are using. I've never used one. I've seen other people use them. They seem great. Um, again, but I'm going with a product that I trust, even though MSR does make one. Uh, but I'm going with a product that I trust, I already own, and I'm familiar with. But back in the day, this was the stove. Um, and I've had this one since probably, I don't know, 99, maybe 2000. Uh, it's the Peak One dual fuel stove. And this was, uh, this was the backpacking stove back in the day. Uh, my dad still has one uh, made by Peak. Uh, it was a single fuel, and we used it all through the 80s, 90s, camping with it. And I purchased one, and it does run off of multiple fuels. Uh, has its own enclosed fuel container. It runs off white gas. Uh, this one runs off white gas, unleaded, and kerosene. If I absolutely had to, though, it does take a little bit of maintenance. It's a little heavy. It's outdated. Um, we keep it mainly as a backup stove if we're if we're doing some car camping, uh, cook around the, the the campsite there. It's real simple and easy. But back in the day, this was a great stove. I still have mine. I love it to death. Um, and it does pack up pretty easy, but just because I own this one, it's not the one that I'm going to be using for this trip. Instead, what I'm going to be using is MSR's Whisper Light. Um, this particular one right here is the Whisper Light International. Uh, this is this is my go-to stove when I go do uh, trips overseas. I've, I've taken it with me there. Also, when I go to disaster zones and work uh, austere environments, uh, I love this stove. One, it's, it's light, it's 11.5 ounces. It's not that heavy. Um, the other thing I like about it is the, the international side of it is that it runs off of multiple fuels. It runs off kerosene, it runs off of white gas, or what a lot of people call Coleman fuel. Um, it also runs off of unleaded gas if I had to. Though the manufacturer does recommend you do not use unleaded gas directly out of the pump um, because of additives. I have had to do that in the past um, actually use unleaded gas straight from the pump. Uh, it burns a little dirty, runs a little rough when you do that, but afterwards, and I was able to get some white gas, I cleaned, cleaned the nozzle out, cleaned it up a little bit, ran a bunch of white gas through it, burning it, it burned out just fine, no issues at all. So this is a great little stove. Normally when I travel, especially in the U.S., uh, working on sites, I go ahead and travel with the uh, MSR 30 ounce bottle. Uh, mainly I'm not really worried about weight at this point. Um, the bottle weighs in, a 20 ounce bottle weighs in at 5.9 ounces empty. Not really sure what 30 ounce weighs, but filling this up with white gas. Uh, I've been away for 30 days. I've cooked on it maybe 10, 15 times, and I've never ran through a 30 ounce bottle yet. Um, it does have a nice child safety cap lock if you need to keep it for storing. I've never had them leak. Uh, they are an aluminum bottle. Uh, the stove, as you can see, it comes, uh, sits nice and flat, lays out. It's got some pretty aggressive teeth to hold your pot. Balances very well. Included in your kit when you get the Whisper Lights, Whisper Light International or the Whisper Light, of course, is your fuel bottle attachment, which I already have on this 20 ounce bottle that'll be going with me on the trip. All right, and this is what you connect. Make sure it's attached to your bottle. It just screws right in, and it's what you'll use to help pump up, and you'll connect your fuel line to get your fuel out. Uh, also included in the kit is this windshield. All right, this is used so if you got windy days or you're trying to conserve heat, all right, you go ahead and put your stove in there. It helps block wind, helps it get uh, cooked a little bit faster, traps the heat in a little bit, and you just run your bottle out. You also got a nice little flat reflector shield that you could put inside here. Put your stove on again, reflecting more heat up. I am not bringing any of this on this trip. It's just extra weight. And if I need to build a windshield, I can either do it with rocks if it's extremely windy, or if I absolutely had to, I can kind of dig it into the ground a little bit to help block that wind. Uh, you can use logs, anything to just block it in. 
Uh, even though the temperatures have been getting a little bit chillier out there on the trail, hopefully by the time I really start getting up into higher altitude, I won't have that big an issue. Uh, one of the benefits to white gas over uh, that I like, another reason I really like this versus using a canister. Canisters, it's a little bit hard talking to people and reading up on them. A little bit hard to tell how much fuel you have left in that canister. Uh, with this, I can just look right inside. Okay, hey, I've, I've got about half a bottle left. I know how much gas is left in here. Uh, along the trail, I can resupply. There's a lot of outfitters that either sell a whole, whole can of white gas and then I can donate the rest to a camper's box or there's some places that sell it by the ounce, so I can just fill up however much fuel I need, whenever I need it, and get moving. Um, the other reason I really like this is canisters, uh, when it gets extremely cold, uh, they like to freeze up because you're relying on pressure. A lot of people have to sleep with them. Um, with white gas, I don't have to do that as much. Um, still, these work better, a little bit better at altitude and a little bit better cold weather. Um, one of the downsides is, of course, if you're going to keep cooking, the longer you're cooking with it, you do have to constantly keep pumping it up to keep building up pressure to force that fuel into your stove. Other reason I'm not a big fan of canisters is it's, it's dead weight. Once the canister is empty, you're having to carry a spare, then you're having to dispose of it. Um, I know there's different ways to dispose, but I've seen a lot of people when I've been out camping, they just take that canister and they chunk it in a garbage can anywhere instead of properly disposing of it. I'd, I'd rather not be adding to that problem, so I'd rather just go ahead and stick with my white gas. Easy to fill up, easy to move on. Um, even though this is my favorite stove, the Whisper Light International Multifuel, it's actually not the stove I'm going to be bringing on this trip. The stove I am going to be bringing on this trip is my Whisper Light. This is my MSR cookpot. It is the pot that I will be bringing on this trip. It's uh, the MSR Solo. Um, it comes with nothing but a lid, the pot, and the handle. Everything that I'm going to be cooking on this trip, I can make right here in this pot. And the other benefit which I discovered, and the reason I particularly like this pot, man, my wife and I both have a, a pot kit that we use together made by MSR, is I can actually fit all the stuff I'm going to be cooking with inside the pot by closing the lid up. Okay, I've got my nice little Sea to Summit cup. Um, this is more just for measuring, a uh, nice hot cup of cocoa. If there's a friendly camper around that's offering out some coffee, I can walk up, I've got my own mug. Collapses down nice and small, fits in my pot, keeping everything nice and consolidated where I can find it. I've got my Sea to Summit Titanium Spork. Um, I did have to modify this a little bit. Uh, all I did was I cut off about a quarter inch, uh, put it on my table saw, put it on the grinder to smooth it out, just so I could make sure I could get it in here. So again, everything fits in the pot one time, so I cut it out. Um, I have my lighter. I'm making sure the stove gets lit. I also have emergency matches and stuff in my bag, but I'm trying to keep the lighter in there with it so everything's found. Then I have my stove. And this is a standard Whisper Light through MSR. Now, this stove fits in this pot. The International actually does not. Just because of these legs, it's a little bit bigger, so it doesn't fit in here. So I went ahead and went with my Whisper Light. Again, it runs off just white gas though. Uh, doesn't run off kerosene, doesn't run off unleaded, but because along the trail I'm going to have opportunities to refill my fuel bottle, fuel's not going to be an issue, this is going to work out just fine. And it weighs in at 11.9 ounces total for the weight on this stove, and 5.9, or 11.5 ounces on the stove, 5.9 on a 20 ounce bottle, which is all I'm going to bring. I'm not going to bring a 30 ounce, I'm just going to go ahead and bring my 20 ounce. And again, I'm storing this bottle with my pump already on it in my bag, it doesn't leak. So I don't need to go ahead and bring the, the extra cap for a little bit of weight. I've got it set up so I can easily just pump this right in and go at it. Um, pot, big enough to fit all my camping gear in there. So especially just the Whisper Light. Uh, I kind of went on a little research project to try and find this. I was looking for one that would actually fit my International just because I like it a little bit better. I'm a little bit more comfortable with it. I like the ability that if I had to, I could adapt fuel. Um, but in the legs, as you can see, a little bit brace, a little bit better. The legs on these just fold out and they lock in. And it sits nice and level. Pot goes on top, start cooking. All right, so how do we fire this up? It's a little more complicated than just lighting one off with a canister. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to put this in. We're gonna go ahead and use this 20 ounce bottle. It's got a little bit of fuel in it. 
That way, this one's already packed, filled up for my trip. I don't really want to go refill it up. The child safety cap, press down, twist, comes right off. Take your pump. Make sure there's no debris on your pump. Try and keep your hands off of it, no dirt. You want to get that hose in there. Then you rotate the, the L, shove it in, and screw it on. And now, because my wife will insist, we're going to go ahead and remove additional combustible materials in case something goes wrong here from the table. We're going to use matches to light this off. All right, so big thing to this, you just want to make sure that your fuel is all the way off. It's got a little negative turn, so you know this is on, that's off. We're going to make sure it's completely off as we just as we connect this. And to connect it, it's got this little lever here, and that helps lock it into the bottle. And I'll show it to everybody. It just flips in. But literally, all you do is shove this in. It's in. And now you bring this lever over and lock it in. And you see it fits in there nice and tight. That keeps the bottle attached to the cable. Now, one thing I learned is never try to start this and pump it up with your food already on the stove because it's going to get a little wobbly. This is the one thing I don't like about this stove is because of this hose, it's a little bit longer. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bit longer with the International. You got a little bit longer hose where with the Whisper Light, and this, this Whisper Light, I've had this since 2000. Uh, it's deployed with me to Afghanistan, Iraq. I love this little stove before I got my International. But you can see, because the hose is a little bit longer on the International versus the Whisper Light, this off, it balances it off, it, it offsets the balance a little bit. It kind of pulls it up because it, it sits right here on this leg. Now once your meal's on it, you got water, it does, it does set it out flat. But keep in mind that it's going to be a little offset. Don't freak out if you do get one, you see that. Where, at least with the International, you got a little bit longer hose, you get a little bit more distance. Um, I don't know if Whisper Light, the newer Whisper Lights from MSR have a longer fuel line. You might even be able to replace this, I'm not sure. Um, but it's pretty simple maintenance on this. All right, so now what we're gonna do is right here, you have a wick, okay? And you have your bowl, your fuel bowl. All we wanna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and pump this up just a little bit. I do not have my fuel on at this time. And then, I'm gonna turn my fuel just a little bit on, and what we wanna do is wet that wick and fill that bowl with a little bit of fuel. And I'm gonna turn this on, and you can hear the fuel move, moving. And there it's wet. Now I'm gonna turn the fuel off all the way. All right, you can see there's a lot of fuel in that bowl. All right, what you wanna do is fill that bowl up. You don't need to get it as full as I just did. And you're just trying to get the wick wet, get a little fuel in there, then turn your fuel off because you're going to do an initial, basically an initial ignition here. You want to heat your lines up, heat your stove up before you start pushing fuel through to get up to the burners. And this is going to burn big and it's going to burn yellow. And we light this off. Okay, and you see the wick's burning, fuel's burning down. It's coming up into the into the stove area a little bit. We're gonna let it sit, burn off a little bit more. It's up into the burners, which is where we want it. And it's being pulled up in there. Now my fuel is still off. I do not have any fuel on yet. Now that it's heated up, we're gonna start turning my fuel on. It's going to get bright. We're going to get a lot more flame. I'm going to pump it a little bit to get some pressure going. Adjust our fuel a little bit here. You can hear it's starting to heat up and pull. Okay. 
what we're looking for is a blue flame. And as this starts burning out a little bit of the carbon, starts getting some pressure built up, you'll see that the big yellow flame dies down. Our fuel is opened all the way. And now we got that nice blue cooking flame to go with right there. So it does take a few seconds, you know, get this set up just right, get that nice flame going. Um, if it's a cold morning, that nice big orange flame is nice because you get that little bit of warmth while you're going. But this is what we're looking for. Now we got a nice cooking flame there. As it starts to die down a little bit, and it will, you'll hear the temp change. All you do is give it a few pumps. And you can pump this with your food on there. It's just better to be very gentle with it while you're doing it. And all you're doing is forcing air into your fuel bottle to force fuel up into your stove. You're just building up pressure by doing this. So it maintains that nice flame, good cooking. Um, with this type of flame, one liter of water, sea level, you know, there's a lot of different uh, conditions that are gonna take place, atmospherics, you're gonna have your your altitude, uh, how high up you are versus at sea level, you're gonna have your temperature, um, how much water you're boiling to get your meal cooked. A lot of this is gonna, a lot of this is gonna affect how long it takes, and it's also gonna affect how much fuel you burn to actually get that done. Um, we did a test, I don't know, a few weeks ago, maybe a month now, uh, where we, 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 at our altitude, which we're about 300 feet above sea level where we're at, um, it took us about five minutes to boil water and with a full 20 ounce bottle We didn't go ahead and pour it back out, but we had, we had weighed the bottle and we, we barely used a half ounce of fuel to get that going So with most of my meals only being one uh, One thing requiring boiled water we should be pretty good and to help get your your food boiled a little bit faster Especially if you're if it's rice or something like that uh, pour your water in Throw your meal in, let it start soaking that water up, do a cold soak while you're setting your stove up. So it's going ahead and absorbing some of that water because that's really what you're trying to do is heat it up and force that water in there. And of course, putting a lid on, it's gonna help boil that water a little bit faster, uh, trapping that steam and that heat or cooking your meal a little bit faster. Shutting this down, just as easy. Okay, gonna turn it clockwise, turn it off. We're gonna cut the fuel source and she's gonna go out. And now all we have to do is let it cool down. Uh, let it sit for five, 10 minutes. Again, atmospherics, if it's colder, colder out, it's not gonna take nearly as long to cool off. And then we simply flip your switch down, unbuckle this again, and I can go ahead and disconnect it from my fuel source prior to it cooling down. Now, one of the things you'll, you wanna make sure is you can see I got some fuel drip here. When you disconnect this, you've got fuel in this little, in your fuel line attachment point. So before you start throwing this back in your pack, um, you wanna make sure you wipe that down a little bit. Make sure it's not dripping. Um, most of this will evaporate, but go ahead and wipe your bottle down a little bit before you throw it in your pack. You don't want any of that dripping on. Now, same thing actually applies to your fuel line. Okay, this is still hot. But we're going to look and you can see your fuel line drips fuel out okay so if you can if you're if you obviously we want to be environmentally sound here uh, we really don't want to be dripping fuel out um, in the past i've gone ahead and opened my fuel bottle back up taking the lid completely off and going ahead tilted this up picked it up and then let the fuel dump back in it wasn't me trying to save fuel and being, oh, I need to save every little ounce. It was, we just don't want spots like this out there on the trail. You're killing vegetation, you're poisoning the ground. Um, that'll eventually leak into a water source. But you wanna be aware of that, that just because you disconnected this, you're gonna get a little fuel drip, all right? And that's enough to cause some issues out in the environment. And you don't wanna just throw this in your pack. Okay, all right, so that covers the end of this. Um, trail and hopefully our neighbor's over here trying to mow our lawn so you'll have to excuse the noise. <laughs> Everyone want to say hi to our neighbor who decided to come over and mow our lawn while we're attempting a video. <laughs> All right, so say thank you. So that concludes 
the stove use that I'll be taking on the trail. We didn't need the fire extinguisher, so that's a good sign. Um, again, MSR, great products, using one of their pots, using their stove, water bags, water purifier, uh, great products. And again, I'm not getting paid by them, though if anybody from MSR is watching and you want to send me some free product, I'm all for that. My wife would really appreciate that so I can stop spending money with you guys. Uh, great products. Uh, again, I'm using the stove. I already had it. This stove runs about $89.99, uh, direct from MSR for Whisper Light. For Whisper Light International, it's $99.99. A uh, little bit better stove. I like it, but it doesn't fit in my pot. Um, so, and I like to be, have everything nice and compact. So I'm going with my, my nice old school Whisper Lights. Always chosen me good, treated me well. Uh, the kit also does come with instructions when you get it. Uh, it does come with a little bit of a repair kit uh, and it's the tool to take this apart if you need to to replace some of the items in there. So they've really thought out the stove, making sure that your experience out there is outstanding. And again, if you have any issues, you can always contact MSR, get them on the phone, get them on an email. Uh, customer service, a few times I've talked to them, has been outstanding. Can't say enough good things about MSR. And everything, although I'm not taking it, does fit in this nice little bag. That's your, your little stove bag that you get. Because I have figured out MSR, your solo pot fits the whisper light. So thank you again, guys. Uh, thanks for commenting. Got any questions? Uh, please comment. Uh, leave comments, questions on the channel. Really appreciate it. And we're down to almost there. And next video we'll be doing probably tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and cover my first aid kit real quick. And that'll be it until we're out on the trail. Thank you very much.